How you doing? Our folks here with the Gilly Galoo. Just out in the yard, just doing some stuff, filling the feeders. I thought I'd talk to you about some owls today, it's migration. So, uh, well, we're on the fringe of migration at least. Uh, some nesting is starting to take place, so a lot of our early nesters, uh, ravens, crows, uh, owls, great horned owls, barred owls, all those kinds of things are busy, busy, busy uh, by mid-March uh, with their young. In fact, I'm seeing some evidence of some owl movement and stuff, some of the areas that I frequent that we're really seeing that, uh, you know, there's there's definitely activity around. Uh, and one of, the, one of the things, and, you know, uh, as a cautionary note right up front, um, I like to say to people, you know, if you do really see an owl and that kind of stuff, be very respectful of its uh, area, particularly this time of year because they're fending for their young, uh, they're feeding, often they're sacrificing their own food sources to feed their young. So if we get too close and we stress them and that kind of stuff, then they're utilizing energy, um, anxiety and those kinds of stuff, perhaps they don't get catch the packs when we're approaching them that they're actually looking down and that there's a prey on the ground that they're they're actually sizing up and ready to hunt and we flush them out off of their stuff and then that means that they're not then providing for their young and those kinds of things so as a very very cautionary note be very very cautious when approaching uh, owls particularly at this time of year but any time of the year for sure uh, for sure, for sure, for sure. But barred owls and stuff, so I had the field guide out here where I was just looking at some barred owls and some of the distinguishing features. On uh, gillygloobird.com, we we have a brand new ebook out uh, on owls of North America. We're talking about all kinds of different types of owls. You can download it off our site for free. So if you check out gillygloobird.com and check out our owl ebook there. But uh, what I'm really was kind of focusing on with the barred owl, particularly this time of year, it's a very, very common owl. I think, uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about. Um, a series of things has happened since 2012 uh, when we had a huge drought in this area and up into the upper Ottawa Valley. Uh, you know, it uh, drove a lot of birds out of the area because uh, things were so burnt up that the food sources were scarce. Uh, and then since then, we've had some lush growth. And along with the lush growth, we've had a very, very high uh, rodent population. Uh, including red squirrels and chipmunks and all those kinds of things that uh, the moles and voles and mice and, and all those kinds of things that the owls feed on. So there's been a lot of food. So owls, for instance, and you know, just in this, uh, this is a fantastic uh, book actually, Hawks and Owls. Uh, it's done by a fellow out of uh, uh, Chris uh, Early is his name. He, uh, he works out of the University of Guelph, has written many different books. We carry them all at the store. Uh, they're great field guides and great information. It's very informal, but very informative. <laughs> That's a good one. Anyway, the uh, one of the big things about barred owls is, for instance, so for people for uh, ID purposes, is it's the only owl in North America or in our area and it, it with uh, brown eyes. All other owls, ex except for the barn owl, which we don't have too too many here, they're extinct in our area, um, is uh, is uh, yellow. They have yellow eyes. So. The, uh, that's one of the, the cool things about it. And so we want to take a look at habitat. We want to take a look at a, a location. Uh, what I'm seeing actually too is that a lot of owls are frequenting uh, bird feeders at night. And uh, because there's uh, seed and things that fall on the ground, uh, and in particular, you just take a look at that feeder over there with the tray on it. And this grow baffle, there's tray uh, droppings or feed, seed droppings and stuff on the bot on the ground. Uh, so there, there perhaps there's mice and and uh, those kinds of things. There's squirrels in the daytime, chipmunks in the daytime, red squirrels. Uh, because those populations have risen, owls are frequenting around. Uh, feeders at night and actually my daughter in a tray like that she actually had an owl pellet show up in in her in her tray and I went over there one day and she said dad what's what is this thing and uh, we took started taking a look at it and I said oh it's an owl pellet so what what owls do so barred owl for instance we're talking about them is that they they'll say capture a mouse field mouse or a mole or whatever that uh, they, and they'll eat the entire thing they just swallow it the entire thing whole. Uh, their physiology, their system then takes all the good away from that and this owl pellet is regurgitated back out with all the waste. So the bones and the hair and all that kind of stuff. So you can often tell where owls are if you watch at the base of trees as you're out. You know, you're out, you've got your your binoculars, you're you know, you're looking at the trees and you're checking things out and you're all over the area. And uh, so 
kind of watch for droppings and things down at the base of trees if you're on trails and what have you. And you'll see that you'll find if uh, uh, owls are frequenting in that particular territory, they'll frequent the same perch at night, particularly when they've they've eaten something and then they've regurgitated this pellet and then they, you know, perhaps they even by their nest, you'll see where their, their nest is and stuff. And it's again, a caution to stay, you know, well back. And, and so anyway, the, I was just reading a little bit about owls. I was filling the feeders here, the transitional owls. I'll just go quickly here, the transitional. So the snowy owls have been in the area, uh, not too, too many left. I think there's a few that people are still seeing, but they've transitioned back up to the, to the tundra for their nesting period. Uh, the great grays have been down. There was uh, several in the area again, this year but they're transitioning back to to where that their boreal forest more more of their area and they're on the nest the great horned owls in our area are on the nest um, and uh, lots of different things so check out gillygloober.com check out our brand new ebook that we have on owls and uh, if you need a field guide need some resources come to either of our stores and we got lots of stuff if there's any questions feel free to leave us a message send us an email give us a call and we'll help you out any way we can owl call Who cooks for you?